Good morning, YouTube. So I went to go check in at the receiver this morning, at the shipper this morning. And uh, that Cascadia got stuck in the dock. His uh, truck wouldn't start. And so we've been out here working on it. But uh, as y'all can see, he's up and going now. But uh, the truck wouldn't start like it wouldn't have any power at all. So I asked him if he unplugged the battery. And he was like, no, I, I didn't. So I said, try unplugging the battery and we'll see if we can reboot the computer. Because in these newer trucks, everything is sensors and computers and ECMs and everything. And so we did that. We unplugged it for a few minutes. Still didn't work. So I told him sometimes those transmissions, sorry guys, sometimes those transmissions get stuck in the gear and the truck won't, um, the truck won't start. And so we unplugged it, that didn't work. And uh, so I tried playing with the, um, the uh, transmission switch and uh, took a little bit, but we got it running, so. Always carry tools, guys. On these automatic new, newer trucks, always unplug the battery, see if that works. Uh, they won't start. First thing, always try the transmission. Because if it's not, the transmission doesn't see that it's out of neutral, it'll get stuck into gear and it won't start. So, he's up and running. Took about 30 minutes or so to kind of diagnose that and get it rolling. But uh, he's out of the dock and so now, I'm just waiting on a phone call so I can get into the dock. But uh, yeah, always carry tools, guys. Even if it's just a few sockets, you know, pliers or screwdrivers, just always have something. Uh, Cause he was stuck in that dock and there was no way for me or the other trucks to get loaded with him being stuck in that dock. And it's a rider rental. So he would have to wait for a, you know, a dock, uh, wrecker and everything to pull him out of there. But uh, we got him going. And so now, uh, waiting on a phone call to get into the dock. So you guys go to enroll that intro and I will catch you uh, on the other side. We are in the dock. Easy backing. Just zoom, zoom, just like that. And we've got a uh, probably gonna take 55 all the way down, going back to Louisiana. Uh, that's probably the plan. All right, cool. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we're loaded. Let's see what we got. My shoes on. It's almost noon. airline back on and get on out of this dock let's see what we got i am gonna this load does require a strap but they didn't tell me that but we're doing a drop and hook so oh okay 
Okay, so we got a load of Home Depot buckets. It is going to the, the usual HEB warehouse. But what I am gonna do, I'm gonna climb up here. Actually, can I use this to climb up here? Let's see, guys. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna take off this mighty strap. Since they're gonna keep my strap. They can't have my mighty straps. Not at all. But they can have this off brand. They can for sure have this off brand. Okay, come on, strap. This bucket's ain't going nowhere. All right. We're gonna keep my mighty strap. So we're just south of Memphis, Tennessee. I get home this weekend, I got some cleaning up to do. I'm gonna take the truck home and get her taken care of. I did get her washed yesterday, as y'all saw. I just had to get some of that other dirt off of there. Got a bunch of Home Depot buckets in there. I wonder if they make them here. Store them here. Maybe they come off the. Uh... The content from the port of Memphis or something. But we're just south of Memphis on the Mississippi side in Sardis, Mississippi, just south of South Haven and Olive Branch. All right, so let's get on out the way. So the next truck can pull in. Actually, yeah, you see his containers over there? Probably came from the port. But let's get out the way and get our paperwork and roll out. Got our paperwork. Just parked way back there. We'll go ahead and seal her up. I did park on location last night, so I'm just now starting my clock. So I'll do another walk around the truck. It's a mini pre-trip, I guess. Another pre mini pre-trip, but we'll hurt to do a second walk around. And then we'll jump right there on I-55 and head on south. Let's get it cranked up. Pre-tip is done. These Home Depot loads have really been a blessing. So we're going back to the 
Home Depot facility in Northwest Houston. Super light load. I think this is only uh, a little over 16,000 pounds. dropped off by 10 o'clock tonight for sure. I'll be home sometime before midnight. I guess we originally had some plans this weekend, but it's gonna take a chill weekend at home. say it and hope that it's a reality but this should be a fairly easy day it says we're eight hours and 45 minutes away from our destination so okay. all right sir Short runs. One is from Houston to San Antonio. This is an 
mile dead head back to Houston since it pays over five bucks a mile. It pays like 1300 bucks. It's the same day shipment. It's gonna be an easy day. It's a three hour drive out there, three hours back. Uh, drop in hook on a pickup, delivery. I'm thinking it's an IKEA load maybe. But all for the same agent. a hazmat load, hazmat tote going down to Laredo. Weighs 45,000 pounds, so we will be taking I-59 down there. I-10, they would not like the scale houses on I-10 would not like that weight. So let's just say that. So we'll take I-59 down there and drop it off. And I'll find me a load coming out. Rain lets up pretty soon. Oh, oops, I turn right here. Somebody's got a whole trailer right here, huh? The air brakes must have locked up on it or something. I followed your plan. I put away my 
my child is lost, it's time to think like a man. I guess the only way to show him is right out to the end. And never lose sight, stand focused, super glue to the plan. I know I need you like the country needs land, or like the church and these fans, or like most children need playing, or like some love and romance. All I need and all I ask for is you. Tell me, can you ride with me? Can we slide? Can we cruise? got some fuel I didn't get any footage of it because when I had got to the fuel island I've been here before and I should have known I was just here a couple of weeks ago the pump on the driver's side is the only pump that works and uh, the passenger side doesn't work at all the driver's side doesn't have the little attachment that holds the nozzle in place the handle in place and so I had to stand there the whole time and hold the the freaking nozzle so so let's do this so I think two weeks ago I did a episode on most frequently asked questions you guys responded greatly to that so thank you so much so today we are going to I'm going to switch it up a little bit and do something similar but it's going to be me addressing the most common criticism whether it's constructive or not uh, that I get uh, whether it's in the comment section <coughs> or uh, email or sometimes just to my face if I see a subscriber out here uh, not every subscriber I see out here I record because some people are critical so they're just negative so all right so yesterday's video I got some criticism because when I dropped off that trailer actually was it yes no 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 no, no. I'm sorry Friday's video this is y'all gonna see so anyway on Friday's video I got some criticism because y'all said that when I saw that uh, that trailer that needed that repair done on the uh, mud flat bracket, I should have reported it. I should have called it in. I just left it there for another driver. This, that, and a third. Guys, everything I do on my day-to-day -day basis is not recorded on camera. Every little thing I do is not recorded on camera. Um. Only about 30% of what I do on my day-to-day -day basis, you guys get to see it on camera. The other 70% is behind the scenes. It is not on camera. Because sometimes it's personal. Uh, sometimes it's just not camera worthy because I got to keep my audience engaged. And sometimes I just simply forget to put it on camera. It's that simple. I, I, it's that simple. So, some of you guys are going to want proof. So yesterday, <clears throat> Uh, I emailed the agent and let her know um, what time I, I, I should have updated her, you know, when I uh, 
get my drop and hook to let her know what trailer I dropped, what trailer I grabbed, and such and such. So I emailed her. Good morning, I apologize. I'm, it's a lowercase I, I don't know why. It should've been a capital I. Anyway, good morning, I apologize. I meant to update you yesterday. I arrived at 3 p.m., departed at 4 p.m. The only available empty from your list was 694550. As I hooked up to it, I noticed that it, that uh, it, it should have been it needed repairs to be road legal. The right mud flat bracket was cracked and risky to fall off. So I grabbed a 671125 instead, which is the trailer I have now. She said, thank you. Did you happen to call it into Landstar Maintenance? I replied, I'm on the phone with them right now. She said, awesome, thank you. So, the reason I did not call it in yesterday to Landstar is because the time at the time I got the trailer, the Landstar Trailer Maintenance Department, department was already closed. So I did not want to call and leave a voicemail because I did not know they were going to get the, that voicemail. So, what was it? Right before nine, <clears throat> I'm sorry, right before 10 o'clock this morning is when I emailed her and let her know what was going on with the trailer. So that was around the time I woke up this morning. I parked at about one or two o'clock in the morning. I got my hours back at, no, 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 no. I think I parked around midnight. Yeah, I parked around midnight last night. So I got my hours back by 10. So right before I got my day started, I went ahead and called it in. I called trailer you, uh, maintenance department, let the agent know, sent pictures and all that. So they know what's up. They said, okay, thank you. We're going to send out a welder. That simple. I did not record that process on camera. So, uh, like I said, everything I do is not recorded on camera. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot, a lot of it's just not camera worthy. So, and then the other half of people complain that my videos are too long, that they show too much detail. And then you have people who only want to comment when it's something critical. Uh, then you have your everyday supporters, like you got, you know, the ones that are always saying nice stuff throughout the day. Thank y'all for that. But uh, like I said, I don't mind criticism. I don't mind constructive criticism, but what is only criticism, that gives me the impression that that's your only viewpoint or your only motive for watching the channel is to be critical. To see, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? I mean, as though you've never done anything wrong before or you don't forget little simple stuff, you know, here and there. But yeah, so the trailer thing is taken care of. The second most critical thing I've gotten as of recently is you're driving this truck around and needs all these repairs. You don't know how to take care of a truck. You should be a company driver. Okay, guys, some of y'all think I'm playing checkers but I'm playing chess. <clears throat> I have hinted in the past couple of videos that something is to come in the near future. <clears throat> this issue with my truck, with these repairs that need to be done and such and such, that stuff is going to be resolved. I have, like I said, I've hinted that in the next couple of weeks, you are going to, I am announcing something huge to the channel. I can't say anything yet. Part of it is because of the criticism and whether constructive or not, and then some of it is because of the haters. Uh, so I have not announced this yet, so y'all can thank them for me not making the announcement. Um, but the repairs on the truck, um, that it will be taken care of in the next two weeks or so. Like I said, some people think I'm playing checkers, I'm just kind of babying around and not knowing what I'm doing. But we have a huge chess play coming up here in the next few weeks, so stay tuned. Uh, I really can't say too much about that as of yet, but uh, let's just say the haters are going to love it. This this move that I'm going to make, not really a move, but this decision that I've made, haters are going to love it. When it comes down to the truck repairs and the repair bill and all that kind of stuff, haters are going to love it. Critical people are going to love it. But when you see the aftermath of my long-term goal, when I say long-term, I mean... February next year or so, January, February, maybe March. When y'all see what happens then, then it's gonna be, oh snap, he wasn't playing. So I can't say too much right now, but uh, yeah, I got something coming up guys and it's, this truck will be taken care of, trust me, uh, it's to come. Like I said, 
I don't post everything on camera, but there are some things moving behind the scenes. Uh, another critical thing I get is that I spend too much time at home. I spend too much time at home because it's an agreement that my wife and I, as two individual adults, have made and there's stuff going on behind the scenes to where maybe I need to be home every weekend. Think about that. So, uh, I do, there's, I, I'm home every weekend because it's needed. It is, um, not mandatory for my family, but there's reasons I'm home every single weekend. Now, uh, that's, and some people have said you're not making any revenue because you're home every weekend. When I talk to other drivers who are going on the road two or three weeks at a time, when I have a good week, you know, with me being home every weekend, I make, if not just as much, just under what they're making, uh, being gone for two or three weeks at a time. I'm making just a little bit less than them being home every single week because I know we're right, uh, what lanes to run. I've been working with a few agents. As you see, the agent that I'm pulling for now, I've been working with this lady for the past week. And she's got me loads next week. One pays over five dollars a mile. One pays over four fifty a mile uh, for next week for Thanksgiving week. Uh, so she's been taking care of me, and I got a few other agents in my back pocket. Y'all know that seven dollar mile run that I run. So I do have stuff behind the scenes going on. And then also, guys, a lot of people don't know this: trucking is not our only source of income. Now I'm not just talking about YouTube. We have several several streams of income that we have not um, exposed or have not uh, announced or talked about on YouTube. So this trucking, me driving this truck, <clears throat> yes, YouTube does put a little change in my pocket, but those are not, not our only sources of, in, of income. So the lack of income that I make on the road is made up elsewhere. Uh, so I just did want to talk about that, elaborate on that as well. So yeah, just some critical comments that I've been getting. I just wanted to address those. So no, I did not leave that trailer for another driver to come get it. Y'all know y'all know me better than that. Come on. Um, this truck in due time, like I said, I'm playing the long game on a few things. There's been some things sitting and just simmering behind the scenes, but there is something um, I'm working out here in the next couple of weeks. And then um, my home time, it's intentional because it is something that is necessary. So just wanted to address those things. They've been kind of brewing in the comment section, or like I said, emails or people I see out here in public. And I just not have, have not enough, uh, addressed them yet. So just wanted to do that. So we were in Jackson, Mississippi. Like I said, just got fuel. The stupid nozzle didn't want to work. And so uh, I'm about to head out of here soon. I just finished my 30 minute break sitting here. We're not in a fuel island. Um, and so we're about six and a half hours away, which is probably going to be seven. Uh, we'll probably be getting there around 10 o'clock tonight for our delivery. And then I'm going to be taking my truck uh, home tonight because I want to take the pressure washer and uh, clean the outside of it. And as well as get the inside of it detailed pretty pretty good since I've got mud and stuff in it all over the place. So y'all stay tuned. I got some big stuff coming. Um, by the end of this year, I do have the merch uh, in the works. Website potentially in the works. And then the uh, I did I've been reading y'all's comments on the whole ordeal with the um, with the uh, DOT uh, respect earn respect given the uh, campaign I'm going to be running with them, and uh, I have taken all all your uh, your advice into consideration. So we're going to try to find the right way to do that. And so I have a lot of things those things in the works plus other things in the works. So by the end of this year, though, y'all got to see a grand reveal of everything coming together and see why it was intentionally planned out but i will be putting hints throughout my videos <clears throat> of what's to come so y'all pay attention to that we will be doing our next giveaway pretty soon um but the moves i'm making guys the facebook group link down in the description lone star texas rangers with an s at the end of it the announcement will be made on there first then i'll be making an announcement on instagram and instagram down there in the uh, description as well official Lone Star Texas Ranger. Follow me on Instagram. So Facebook, the Facebook group, the private group, you guys are gonna get that uh, announcement first. Make sure when you go add yourself to the group, click on that link in the description, add yourself to the group. It's gonna ask you what color is my truck, put black. It's gonna ask you where did you find me, put YouTube. Add yourself to the group, you'll see the announcement first, or go to Instagram and follow me at official Lone Star Texas Ranger. I'll be putting the announcement on those two platforms first before it is on YouTube to, to kind of give them the exclusive, you know, 
preview of what's to come. I want to be able to do that for them. And uh, yeah, so that's, we got a lot going on guys. So make sure y'all do all those things. Thank y'all so much for subscribing. If you have not subscribed yet, click down there below. Uh, but I do like the criticism. Thank y'all for the criticism. Uh, but the constructive criticism, the criticism that's just for pure neg negativity, thank you for that too, because I feed off of it. Thank you. These moves I'm making is partially because of you guys. So you guys have uh, inputted on this, uh, this decision, this move I'm about to make. So, but like I said, y'all gonna love it at first. You're gonna hate it later. So uh, yeah, let me get back off out here and hit the road. Brad knows what's going on too. I've talked to him because he's a mechanic, so he knows about the repairs on the truck and everything. So I need to link up with him so we can get that stuff done. But stay tuned. We got a lot coming. Let's get back on this interstate.
guys. We are on I-10. There is a 18-wheeler accident. A couple of miles down the road. And I've been sitting here for about Two or three hours now. But yeah. Oh man, I swear man. Never seems to fail. So with that being said, I am not going to be able to deliver my load tonight. I am out of hours, I ain't got no hours left, so I gotta find somewhere to park as soon as this whole little shebang is over with. So apparently it's two 18 wheelers that collided uh, or in the ditch or something. And they said one, one 18 wheeler went way up in the woods back up in there and they're trying to pull him out of the woods. So we're gonna be here for a couple of hours. It's, it's a dangerous highway we're right here, about four miles from the Louisiana, Texas state line. Uh, it gets real sketchy. The, it's a bunch of potholes, there's barriers up, uh, twists and turns, and there's no lights. And so it, it is sketchy, it's real dangerous going down this road. And so, uh, so yeah. Like I told you guys earlier, stay tuned. I have some stuff coming up for the channel. Uh, like I said, the haters, y'all gonna love this move I'm making. You're gonna love it, but then you're gonna be disappointed in the future when you see what my long-term uh, move is. And so, but first we gotta get some, we gotta get this truck situated. So I have a long list of repairs and uh, we are gonna get that situated to get it taken care of. That is first on the list, so sucks guys this man it sucks i wonder i might be able to put like a split sleeper or something depending on how long we sit here but i don't know guys but yeah i can't deliver tonight so i'm gonna have to deliver tomorrow which is saturday and that was not what i was trying to do i was trying to deliver tonight go home that way i ain't gotta even think about this truck for the weekend and i am starving i might go back there i got a subway sandwich back there guys <laughs> i forgot about that yeah yeah, I'm gonna eat my Subway sandwich and call it a day. Put a little help in my, in my system, a little healthiness. So guys, this is Lone Star Texas Ranger signing off. I'll catch you guys at noon Central Standard Time tomorrow.